Hi guys, welcome back to another Volkswagen Caddy video. Uh, let me run you through the list of jobs that we need to do. Starting at the front of the van, we need to take the front bumper off. There's been a little kink on it, down here. The light is not the best at the minute, but there's a little kink there from where we um, run into a speed bump. So we need to take the front bumper off and we need to straighten that kink out using a bit of heat. While the front bumper's off, we're gonna get the bonnet up, get the front grille off, we might have to get the headlights out and we're gonna look at the damage that's underneath. So I smashed this into a speed bump, I've said, I've mentioned it before. Um, I had to replace the sump, so we're gonna check that out. We're gonna see what other damage has been caused. I know that the van is leaking coolant somewhere. There's a very, very small puddle of coolant on the floor when I drive this van off, off out of the garage. Um, and I keep getting, I keep having to top it up and I keep losing coolant. So we're gonna find the coolant leak. I bought a tester kit for that, so we're gonna run through that. It's also got a boost leak, so we're going to find the boost leak somewhere, hopefully, um, and we're going to get that sorted out. I, I believe that's all been caused by the speed bump damage, um, and we're going to check exactly how much is damaged and how much I need to replace underneath, um, because I haven't really had a chance to look yet. And also, while we've got all that off and we've got the front end off, we're going to finally replace the ABS pump, which I've had for months and months and months and months and months. So we're going to replace that as well. That's in there somewhere. So we're going to replace the ABS pump. We're going to check for the boost leak, check for the coolant leak, and we're going to try and straighten the front bumper out again. While the bumper's off, we might fill it and smooth it and get it ready for paint as well because it's going to have to get painted pretty soon. So without further ado, we're going to get the car up in the air, get the front wheels off, get the front bumper off, and possibly the headlights. But yeah, let's start stripping it down. get a front bumper off. I'm not going to show you how to do it, I'm just going to whip it off. If you want to see how to take the front bumper off, check it out in this video that I've linked up in the corner. Um, that's me when I replace the front bumper. So if you need to know how to get that off, information's in that vid. So I've touched it on it in a, in a previous video before. Um, I had a little incident in this, and we can see immediately the results of that. So I was going along my own business and came up to a speed bump. I hit the speed bump a little bit too fast. I wasn't speeding, but the um, obviously the van's lowered and the bump was quite severe. So I went over the bump, came smashing back down to the ground and smashed the front bumper. I smashed the sump because as you can see that one's brand new completely disintegrated the sump there was a huge crack there like a massive gaping hole so we had to replace that bit of a fiasco in itself van got left on the side of the road because obviously we couldn't drive it so i was very very close to where i work that's in fact where i was heading so i managed to sort of limp it to where i worked we parked it up for a few weeks got some sumps ordered so i say sumps i will say sumps because there was two um, and eventually got the correct one on and replaced it. But we've also caused more damage. So looking down here, we've got all the cracked plastics there. We've got cracked brackets which hold this down. Um, this was popped off. Um, it's reattached now, but we need to look into it and see if it's leaking because I've definitely got boost leaks. On this side, we've got cracked plastics. Again, so all of this radiator support has all been smashed to pieces. This is just a bit of a plastic trim, we can replace that easily. But we're gonna need a new radiator support by the looks of it, now they're not cheap. I can probably leave it as it is, um, but I don't wanna leave it as it is, I want it to be right and I want it to all be there, I don't want broken radiator supports. That's all we can see on the surface, so I need to dig a little bit deeper. Um, I need to have a little look underneath. Everything under there is pretty good. This is where the main impact was, you can see. And obviously the sump took a massive impact, they're the lowest points. The, um, they're all good. Everything else is pretty good. I don't think any engine mounts got broken, but 
yeah, it was a big old impact, and there was a lot of shattered bits of metal that went flying everywhere. So I was panicking, but other than the fact we're, we're leaking boost, the van runs all right after that. Most of this oil that we can see here is from when the incident occurred. It's obviously sprayed out the bottom, gushing everywhere. So I know it looks bad, but if I jet washed it down a little bit, um, it'll all be gone. Scuffs on there. So this hit the ground a little bit. We've got scuffs there, look. So the, that's been ground away. That bolt's been ground away. Um, and this has been ground away. But again, nothing. none of that's cast catastrophic damage we can get away with all of that we'll just probably if we're being really fussy we'll just replace a few of these bolts but there's nothing i want to worry about just yet fans probably gonna have an engine swap at some point um which will include a new subframe so again not the end of the world um i think we're pretty good underneath that we need to find where the boost leak's coming from and the coolant leak um boost pipes look all look okay the only one that i visibly saw that was loose was this one here um, and that's what that is back on again now. That one's all on. That one's on. So we just need to check for for cracks in plastic, really, um, and check some of the top pipes. Looking at the top of the engine, on the whole, it all seems there. There's nothing that's screaming out to me. It's being broken. We're going to have to check sort of all these plastic connections. This is obviously um, turbo as well. We're going to need to obviously check all the plastics on this. They could have snapped anywhere. Yeah, I, I don't know really. Um, it's just going to be a little bit of fault finding. And then we're also going to take the battery out and get down there to the ABS pump and change that. Hopefully clear some codes on the dash, finally. So without further ado, is that okay? Yeah, that's all right. It's just the, the plastic, the clip's broken. The actual wiring's fine. The other thing we're going to do today is um, we're going to check for a coolant leak. So at the minute, coolant level is probably below. Let's see if I can get this off. I know when I start the van, I, I get coolant warning. Some pressure in the system there. So we do, oh, we do have some coolant in there. See the blue in there, which is good news. So I've got a kit. I bought it on eBay. Hopefully, I've got the right adapter for it. So it connects to that. You screw it on. You pressurise the system. In, in order to get it up to what would be sort of how it is at running temperature because obviously we don't want to be testing cooling systems at running temperature because someone's going to get injured you're going to burn yourself you're going to do some damage to your engine so we're going to pump it up to as it would be if it was running we're going to be able to look underneath the van and we're going to see if we can see any obvious leaks from anywhere so that's probably going to be our first job i'll get the kit out i'll show you what it looks like and i'll connect it up to that so here it is in all its splendor was 50 pounds roughly there or thereabouts 48 quid there are others that cost more there are others that cost less obviously the ones that cost less have less in them the ones that cost more have more in them but they're all quite affordable so this is what you're getting in the box you've got all of these different nozzles and these are for obviously different cars so you've got the older style radiator caps here you've got some adapters for those um, and you've got all of these as well i would hope i've got a little instruction manual tucked in there tearing it apart so this has got a list of all the applications on it and what which ones are what so we are Volkswagen so we're using number nine I'm gonna say Audi A4 A5 A6 BMW BMWs as well Passats Porsche Cayennes um, so hopefully number nine should fit our radiator maybe Audi that's earlier earlier Volkswagens We've got the Fords, we've got Mercedes. Obviously, there are more. So let's get number nine out. Where's number nine? Just there. I'm going to take it over to our radiator. And it should screw in there if we move that out of the way. So we'll get that undone, just a 10mm bolt. We'll get that moved out of the way and we'll screw that into there. Take that out of there. We can move that over. Yeah, I'll screw it in there nice and tight. Sorted. And we've got this hand pump. Get this out. So that end will 
push fit onto your um, your connector on top of the radio cap, and then we'll pump the pressure up. Instructions do say pump it up between 15 and 20 psi. It's obviously a Chinese translation. It's not the best reading for it, but we'll pump it up to 15 to 20 psi. That should be operating temp um, operating pressures, and then we will check the gauge. We'll be able to see how fast it's going down, if at all. Then we'll look underneath the van and see if we can find the leak. This is literally just on, push it on, and it's on. To release it, just pull the thing back and it comes off. So it's just a quick release, just like the end of an impact driver. Like that, on, job done. Okay, so with that on there, we're going to pump this up. We're going to get it right into the middle between the 15 and 20. Okay, then we're just going to watch that carefully for a minute and see if it starts to drop. Hopefully, it doesn't. Many months later, and we're back. As you can see, I'm now in the unit. So, this video is going to be a bit cut and shut. But I'm going to try and pick up from where I left off in the garage. Now, I, I've got the van back together again and I've driven it here. What I can say is after doing the coolant test, there was no pressure loss. So I ended up getting distracted and sidetracked and that pressure gauge was left on there for probably at least four days, five days. Um, and I came back and the pressure was almost like exactly the same. So it lost virtually no pressure whatsoever. Also in investigating like boost leaks and stuff like that, I couldn't see anything. So. I've got to basically take the front end of this van off. I've got to get the turbo off it, inspect the turbo and probably replace the turbo. And I'm going to look a bit further into the coolant leaks. I think it's my EGR cooler because it's had an EGR delete, uh, but the cooler is still there. It's plumbed in, but I've known, I've heard that that is a possible leaking point. So I'm going to take that off anyway because it needs to be removed. <laughs> And hopefully you caught that. That shouldn't have happened. So this is my intercooler pipe. Um, and this is not meant to have oil in it. So you do sometimes get a bit of residue and there, there is occasionally a little bit of oil, but that completely pissed out of oil there. So that is a clear sign that the turbo is basically over spinning. Um, and it's not, it's not creating any pressure. It's not creating any boost pressure. It's just, it's just shooting oil free. Um, so I wasn't expecting that, as you might have guessed. It does sort of lead to the turbo again. Um, I was going to use this pan originally for the coolant. I still will use it for the coolant um, because it doesn't matter. I'm going to chuck it all away anyway. So um, yeah, I'm going to drain the coolant out of the radiator. I'm going to take the radiator off because I've got all this broken shit. This whole shroud is broken, so that's all going to come off. I'm going to remove this. Keep the radiator is fine, um, but. Well, I've got to get rid of all this.
The next thing I'm going to remove is the airbox, the battery, and that way I can get down to the ABS unit as well because that needs swapping. The, uh, the computer on the ABS has been folding on this for a long time. Um, I bought a replacement from Rakers probably last year. It's never got around to fitting it because I've never really driven the van that much. So, yeah, airbox, battery off. This, um, this bolt in here, that's meant to be a 10 mil, um, and it's been corroded away with what I believe is battery acid. And it's basically just a circle now. So it's, it's not even, like, I've not tried to get a thread on it at all. It's just a straight circle. So um, using mole grips, I mean, it's not the tightest bolt in the world, I hope. So hopefully with some mole grips on it, I can get that out. But that is, yeah, it's, it's just seemed to have just eating itself away to the point where it's now like more of a nine mil. In fact, I will try and get a nine mil on it. Yeah, that has worked for the nine. It's slipping, but it's biting just enough to turn it. That's going to have to get replaced. Right, I think I'm going to leave it there for this video. I'm running out of light. You're running out of time. So we'll call it a day. I've basically removed everything that I need to remove to get access to the turbo. There it is. I've got the airbox off. I've got the intercooler pipe off. Obviously all the radiator, everything else. Um, I've even had to take this front shield off as well, just for access. So in the next video, we'll get that off. We'll get this off down here. Um, hopefully I can just remove the computer without having to remove the whole pump and then I don't have to um, bleed all the brakes here. So we'll see, we'll, get, we'll have a look at that down there. But we'll get the turbo off and try and investigate it. Um, there is a lot of oil pissing about out there. I don't know if you can see the lights, pretty, pretty dim down there. But that's where we're at today. Bit of progress finally at last. 
I've been putting it off. I've just been too busy. I've been doing other stuff. No excuses, really, but we're getting there. I'm almost in two minds about what to do. I'm at this stage now. I do want to swap the engine in this fan. I do want to go for a petrol. I am looking at a V6, and I have got an idea about putting a Porsche Cayenne V6 in here. So it is the same V6 as that's in a Golf R32 with some very small differences, but it's basically the same block. It should fit in, but it will just have the Porsche um, rocker cover on it. And that'll go well with some Porsche calipers, maybe some Porsche wheels. That is a thought. That's what I've been thinking in my head. Um, so I'm at this stage now. We maybe just rip the engine out and get a cheap Porsche Cayenne that's maybe had a crash or that's just knackered, gearbox is knackered, and we take the engine out of it and we put it in this. Gearbox, we'll have to source, we could probably have to get like a Mark 5, Mark 6 GTI gearbox. We can sort that out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should I try and replace the turbo and just get this running again, or should I just go full send, engine out, and new one in? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this far if you got this far. And please stay tuned, stay subscribed. If you want to see more on this fan, we will get there. It's been a slow old journey, but I'm determined to get it sorted out by the end of the year. I want it painted, I want it running before the end of this year, mainly because I don't want to be driving that through the winter because I've got some plans for that as well during the winter. So stick around. The videos are going to be coming thick and fast. We're in the unit now, we've got the space, we've got the time. Um, so we're going to get working on this. So yeah, join me for the next video. Uh, I'm going to tear that apart even further, get all the um, the dodgy bits out. Hopefully, if it's an easy fix, we'll fix it. If it's not, maybe maybe we'll swap the engine. Who knows? But yeah, thanks very much. If you got this far, please give the video a like if you liked it, and I'll see you on the next one.